Hi, this is Kelly at Quilters Paradise again, and this time we're going to show you a project that we did using our six inch clamshell template slit and sew method. This is what we came up with, just a real fun, different way to put together a clamshell quilt. You don't see these as often, but right now clamshells are just booming. You see them everywhere. So we thought we'd do our own little version using fabric from Laurel Birch, Clothworks Laurel Birch Basics. So let's go over to my sewing studio and we'll get going. So we're going to start by sewing a four patch. Now your six inch templates come with two pieces. You've got your clamshell and then this is like for your finishing at your top and bottom, even your sides, so you don't have to cut off fabric and waste it. But for this project, you're not going to need your uh, piece B, your template B. You only need your A, which you can see right here. Now, just to make sure, we have a video showing what you do with this template. But just as a quick reminder, when you cut, you're going to cut all the way around. You're going to cut your slits using your handy dandy, in my case, my 28 millimeter rotary cutter. You're going to cut your slits. And then you're going to, when you're done, you're going to simply flip it over and you're going to cut this slit. The reason we don't have one on this side as well is because it would make this um, likely to break. It'd be so narrow. So you simply go ahead, you cut all the way around, you cut all your slits. As you see, we don't have the corresponding slit here. So we flip it and we just cut that slit with our rotary cutter. Okay? So let's get started. So you're going to first and foremost decide your layout. In this case, we're going to use these two colors. They're the same. And what you're going to do is you're going to sew the center together using your accurate quarter inch seam. With these, I am actually stay stitching both at the beginning and end throughout this project. I don't normally do that, but I find because you're doing some tugging and adjusting, it makes sure that your seams stay solid and don't start coming apart. So you're going to take this, you're going to just sew your quarter inch seam, and then I'll show you how we start joining the other two pieces. Okay, so I've sewed this little narrow piece together for my two pieces. Now I do suggest that you press your seam open here just to create less bulk. So now we're going to sew in the third of our four patch. And as in all the ones that we do, all of our templates, we actually end up first lining up the two ends square. Again, we're going to have our beautiful quarter inch tape that's going to keep us honest. And we're going to take a couple stitches. And again, I'm going to back stitch or stay stitch here. And then we're going to find our next seams our next slits, sorry about that. And we're going to be straightening them out and we're going to sew to that slit. As you can see, there are absolutely no pins being used here. Okay, we're matching up our next slit and sewing. Our next slit and sewing. Now once you get to your seam here, there isn't a slit, but we use that to match up against the top slit here of your four, third piece. So it's going to be centered. There we go. And now pass there. Matching up our next slits. Again, you can tug a bit here and there to get them together. It's not going to hurt anything. And this way you don't get any puckers. getting close. We're just sewing past our last slit. We're going to sew a little further down. And then I'm going to get my fingertip stiletto. And this way I kind of maneuver the fabric a bit. We're going to 
push that over a little more. Now, needle down, and you're going to pull over your fabric and square it up. There you go. That's going to make you have a nice, even seam. It's all going to match. I'm going to stay stitch, and we're done. So let me see that. And look at what we have. So we have a great, no puckers, beginning and end all match are even. And then I'll take you over and show you how we want you to press these. All right, so when pressing these pieces, you wanna press away from that narrow area here because we're gonna sew the opposite one on and we wanna make sure that they all match up. So this creates, again, a lot less bulk, but look at that. Absolutely no pinning, ladies and gentlemen. So this will be the start. We're going to finish and put our other piece right here. And this is our unit that we're going to be working with. So next, I'm going to show you how we're going to put it all together. So this project is an advanced beginner to intermediate, I would say. Um, it does involve a little more finagling. It takes a little bit longer, but regardless, Anybody can do this with a little bit of practice. Um, so you're going to have, in this case, for this project, for this row, we have four of these four patches, and they're all connected, the little narrow ends. They almost look like Christmas ornaments. You're going to lay out your fabrics how you want them to look. So it, that's kind of fun. It takes a little bit of playing with it. But you lay them out, and then what we're going to do is we're now going to join this row to two rows I've already put together so I can show you what's involved. There's a couple little tricks, but nothing um, difficult. So let's go grab those, and I'll be right back. Okay, so these are the colors we decided to use for our table runner or wall hanging, whichever you decide you want to do with it, how you want to use them. So we used a blue, purple, green, pink, and our orange. Um, in some cases, we had four different colors, four different fabrics, I'm sorry, in the same color wave. In other cases, with the orange, and I do believe the green, we only used two different colors, fabrics. So now you need to lay out, and you need to figure out what's gonna go where, what colors where, and how big you wanna make it. Right now, we've got these two, the orange and the pink sewn together, and the purple and the blue. So we're going to now attach the green. Let's attach it to the pink and orange side. And I'm gonna show you a couple little tricks when you start off. Other than that, everything stays the same. You're still matching up your slits all the way across. They all correspond nicely makes it very easy and then I'll talk about also the beginning the end and making sure your seams right here when the colors kind of come together that they intersect and match up well okay I'm gonna let you know ahead of time it's pretty easy to get lost in where you need to start don't worry about it just be patient once you get it going it, it's fine. It's just you have to have it all laid out and determine where you need to start it. So in this case, we need to start here. So what slit, or if any, do we have to line up here to this? We actually have the slit at the top of the curve is what you need to match up with the beginning there. So we're going to go ahead, take this over to the machine. We've matched that up, and we're going to go ahead and Take a couple stitches and then stay stitch this. And then you're simply going to sew to your slits. And just you sew a little bit, you finagle, you pull. There we go. Here's our next slit right here. Now we're getting to these seams. 
So you can see this one and this one. And the way you get a really nice connection between the two, it's like anything else. You're going to match up your seams with the posing seam allowances and you're going to nest those. Can you see that? They're nested. And then you're just going to sew your quarter inch and you're going to keep. Now we're back to where we're matching up new slit side. I gotta get a little way over. There we go. The fabric's kind of, it's a little awkward, but once you get used to it, it actually is not bad at all. Again, it's just taking some getting used to. So we're matching up our slits, see there? Now we're at the connection of the two narrow ends and again you're going to match those up to the slit at the top of your curve. And that's going to make sure everything aligns. And that's where we are. Keep that seam pressed open and you keep going. Now this is going to be a project where speed is not king. You're going to want to take your time, enjoy the process, and you will love the end result. I'm going to finish sewing this all together and I'll show you our finished product. All right. All right. So we're coming right on up to the end here and we just keep going. Bring it our over. There we go. And we're going to stay stitch this. Take it off. Well, it doesn't want to break open. Now I'm going to take it over to the pressing and I'm going to show you how it all turned out with not a single pin being used. Okay, so now we're going to press our rows together. And um, I pressed the beginning. This is right at the end. So what you're going to do, though, is if you're connecting, like we're going to be adding two more rows to this side, you're going to want to press your narrow piece away from itself towards the big curve, okay? The rest of it doesn't really matter. So here we go. We've pressed... And I'm going to flip this over and show you what we got. Look at this, right? This was done. I'm going to just kind of press everything. A nice press. And this was done with absolutely no pins. Not a single pin found its way into this quilt. If you find you have maybe a little fold or what have you. This is where you can use a little bit of steam to get that, work that out. But for the most part, you should not have that be an issue at all. All right, so now we're going to finish putting these pieces together, joining them to this group, and we're going to have a finished product. We'll square it up and we'll show you what it looks like. So you saw how we did this fun quilt. I have to say though that I could totally see this in Christmas fabrics. If you were to do these components in your Christmas fabric and these as your backgrounds, you would look like you actually had Christmas ornaments. And what a fun way to do a place, a table setting with this as your centerpiece. So anyway, you can catch us on Pinterest. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're also on Instagram, and we have a website as well. Oh, let's not forget the wonderful Facebook. So we'd love for you to check us out and all the other wonderful projects that we have when we use our slit and sew templates. Have a great day and have fun sewing.